Hello potters. So tonight we're going to be talking about a surface decorating technique called Sgraffito. And what Sgraffito is, is basically you take your clay body that you formed a vessel or a decorative object out of and you coat it in a contrasting color, whether that be a darker slip from a different clay body or an underglaze. After you've coated the whole thing in that contrasting color, you then take a trimming tool or some sort of carving implement and you start subtracting that top layer that you've colorized from your surface and you reveal the contrasting color of the clay body underneath. Um, there are a lot of different ways you can go about this. Usually I like to use like a darkened slip that I've thickened up in the studio. But um, right now, today, we're going to be using underglazes to create this graffito technique. So this is a decorative object that I created on the wheel. It's a uh, closed in form, just a little sculptural piece. And the first thing I'm going to do is I need to coat this and um, you know, the color of my choosing that I'm then gonna contrast. Uh, for my own practices, I keep my color palette pretty minimal. So I have your basic uh, primary colors to work with as well, as well as black and white. Today, I'm gonna be using my blue underglaze. I usually use Amico Velvet underglazes, but I've been using these Mako Fundamental series as well, and I find these work great. So, yeah, let's get started. I'm going to get out my decorative object again. Uh, for this first, you know, part of the process, I'm just coating this whole thing in a different color. So, I find it helps me out if I have a banding wheel handy. That way I can charge my brush, my sponge, whatever I'm applying the underglaze or slip with, and uh, sort of give the wheel a turn and uh, make it a little bit easier to apply that first coat. So with any underglaze, I like to apply three coats. I think that's what the factory recommends too. And we're going to be applying these coats in um, sort of varying strokes. And what I mean by that is like the first coat I'm going to put on horizontally going left to right. The second coat I'm going to put on up and down. And the third coat, I'm going to go back and do another light coat from left to right. And what this does is it hides our brush strokes. It hides the application process because really you want this, at least in you know, my opinion, you might have a different aesthetic taste and that's totally cool. When I colorize the surface of my piece, I want it to look seamless. I want it to look as though it's made out of uh, blue clay or that it was like maybe dipped in a vat of color. Obviously for a piece this size, and I'm using a uh, underglaze in a 16 ounce jar, I would not be able to dip this. I could pour it on, but you know, that gets kind of messy. And um, you know, I'm gonna have to scoop all that extra glaze out of a pan to get it back in my cup. So today we're gonna be sponging on our glaze. So tools you're gonna need, uh, I like to have a small paintbrush. Uh, the synthetic nylon bristles. Uh, it's good for just touching things up if I miss a spot. I'm also going to want a underglaze of my choosing and I'm going to be sponging on this glaze. So I have this simple orange uh, circular sponge that you'll get in any basic pottery toolkit and I'm going to be using that to apply my first couple coats. Uh, usually in the studio I like using hockey brushes uh, I have a one inch and a two inch hockey brush sitting on my shelf back in my studio. So uh, I find those charge really well and it's easier to hide the brush strokes. So, you know, barring access to those materials, this sponge is going to do a great job. So let's get started. Uh, obviously it's gonna be hard for me to dip the sponge directly into my bottle of underglaze. So I'm gonna get out a small cup. and I'm gonna put this underglaze in it so it's easier to dip my sponge. You'll see this underglaze is pretty thick. Okay. 
and you know all an underglaze is essentially is a colorized slip it's a proprietary blend of materials that they've mixed in their warehouse and they've added some mason stains to it to give it the desired color so it's basically just like liquid clay it's great if you're doing an illustration on the outside of your piece because it doesn't flux it doesn't turn to glass in the kiln so you're not going to have it blur or uh, distort your image at all and it's really useful because uh you know i can put it on greenware this piece hasn't been fired yet it's at a, a pretty dry leather state it's almost at bone dry um i can also put this on bisqueware and if i want to get crazy i could put it on top of a glaze piece too and then refire it um wouldn't necessarily recommend that but fortune favors the bold why not experiment see what happens um yeah so this blue underglaze, I'm going to put three coats on this decorative object. I'm going to have to let it sit up a little bit afterwards because I want that to be uh, a completely uh, leathery surface before I start carving in my, you know, decorative marks. So let's get to it. Just dip my sponge in here, starting from the top as I start spinning. You know, this sponge's got a pretty big tooth to it, so you can already see why I'm gonna need additional coats. I'm gonna hide all this. the crannies. Nice thing about underglaze is it seeps into your clay. That's another reason why you need to have multiple coats because your clay is actually going to suck in this moisture from the underglaze. That's one of its beauties. It's going to help it bond that way. I want to make sure there's a nice solid coat everywhere. You know, I like using this sponge because it covers a lot of surface area, but if you've got some wider paint brushes, I would uh, really recommend using those because the sponge, it can pull away some of the glaze that you've already applied and that can get frustrating. But, you know, I've done it like this so many times, it's hard for me to break the habit. All right, let me get a little bit more. We want that 
foot area to have a nice coat. All right, so I'm going to let that dry for a couple minutes. A lot of the moisture of the underglaze is going to get absorbed into the clay body, so it's going to become, you know, dry to hold pretty quickly. So I'm going to start applying my second coat now. Just using up and down strokes. You know, I'm not pushing with a lot of pressure when I'm using this sponge. I don't want to accidentally drag more glaze off of the piece while it's still drying. So it's really a light touch that I'm using. These crevices are kind of hard to get to, so more blotting in there. Pretty blue vessel there. All right, so for my last coat, I usually go back and forth. I'm finding this blotting maneuver is working really well for me, and I kind of like the texture that's leaving behind. So I'm gonna do this last coat by blotting. And again, if you've got a one or two inch brush, a, you know, one to two inches wide. I would recommend using that for your colorizing process. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter how you get the color on there. You just want a nice even coat.
Mm -hmm. All right, I'm liking the way this is looking. I'm now saying I got a big bald spot here, so I'm adding a lot of glaze. That's a good coat. I'm not seeing any bald spots. And it's gonna be a lot of fun to carve. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put this out of the way. You know, I believe that if you waste not, you want not. So I'm gonna pour the rest of my underglaze back into my jar. This stuff can get expensive, so I'm even gonna use my finger to sort of scoop the remaining bits back in there. And this material's non-toxic, so you don't have to worry about putting gloves on there. It's not going to poison you. But it might upset your stomach if you drank it, though. So it <laughs> feels ridiculous, but I should mention, don't drink this stuff. All right, that'll do. Not any drips there. All right, so that's uh, demo one. I gotta let this thing sit before I can start carving in it. So uh, I'll see you about in an hour or two.